Welcome everyone to another video where we are going to solve problem number 17 from the chapter of uh, force vectors. The second chapter from the book of engineering mechanics, the statics part written by R.C. Hubler. So this problem is a bit different uh, than the one which we have solved before. So here there are three forces which are acting on this body. We are being asked to determine the resultant of three forces and we are being asked like uh, first we need to determine the resultant of uh, two forces F1 and F2 that will be F dash and once we have that F dash then that F dash and F3 force will be used to determine the magnitude of the resultant of all these three forces. So the process is simple, first we add the first two forces and once we have the resultant of that, so these two forces will be replaced by F dash force, then F dash force and F3 force will be used to determine the resultant force. So let's start solving this problem considering the body on which these forces are acting. So let's first take the F1 and F2 force. F1 force have a magnitude of 30 Newton but it's not being directly given with uh, the angle with the positive x-axis but a triangle is being given to us so from here we can determine the angle this angle using the tan theta formula or any of the trigonometric relationship because we know is uh, hypotenuse base and perpendicular so I simply use uh, tan formula so tan theta would be equal to perpendicular over base perpendicular is 3 base is 4 so on doing calculations I mean 10 inverse of 0.75 will give us 36.87 degrees. So this force is making an angle of uh, 36.87 degrees with the negative x-axis actually. And we have F2 force uh, which makes an angle of uh, 20 degree with a negative y-axis. Now first of all we are going to determine the magnitude of F dash force which is actually the resultant of F1 and F2. So that will simply be determined by the cosine law. So F dash would be equal to in under root F1 square plus F2 square plus 2 F1 F2 cos the angle between them. So let's uh, represent that with alpha. Keep in mind that I usually use a positive sign instead of negative sign. When I'm using positive sign then uh, it is quite easier for us to have the angle between these two forces. So this is the angle I'm talking about. Instead of using negative sign and then then uh, drawing its uh, imaginary resultant by parallelogram law and then determining the angle will be a bit uh, complex for me. But again it's up to you if you want to use uh, the negative sign then it's up to you. So simply put the values now F1 is 30, F2 is 20. Now how about this alpha angle? So this alpha angle is actually this is 20 so the remaining will be 70. So 70 plus uh, 36.87 will make 106.87. So on doing this calculations you are going to get f dash as 30.85 newton now determining its direction is also important so that we can place it uh, in this xy system and then we add f3 force to have the resultant of these three forces so let's move on for the determination of the direction of f dash force for that again we are going to use sine law the application of sine law is uh, like we have to form a triangle first so we have to keep one force at the same position and we have to displace uh, the other force by taking the tail of that force with the head of the existing force so I move F2 force to F1 by doing so you can see that uh, the tail of F2 force is actually at the head of F1 force. The closing side will be now the resultant which is F dash here. So F dash we have uh, just calculated is 30.85. This angle up to negative x axis is uh, 36.87 and if this is 36.87 then this angle can be determined by taking this imaginary line if this is 36.87 so this will also be 36.87 as they are opposite angles so 90 minus 36.87 which will be 53.13 plus 20 will make this interior angle so this interior angle is uh, 
now as we are using sin law so for this angle we have 20 plus 53.13 this will be divided with the opposite side which is f dash and that is 30.85 now it can be equated in order to have the direction for the f dash force so so this will be the one which we, we are interested in so let's name that as uh, x angle so sine x angle would have an opposite uh, side as 20 newton so on doing calculations we are going to get the value of x angle as 38.34 degrees so if uh, the total angle from uh, f1 to f dash is 38.34 if we subtract this uh, 36.87 then we are going to get this smaller angle so on subtracting uh, we are going to get this smaller angle as 1.47 degrees so we have now the angle of this f dash force and also its magnitude now let's uh, jump back for the determination of the total resultant for that now we will uh, leave f2 and f1 because instead of these two forces we have got the resultant now no need to take this f1 and f2 we will take uh, f3 only so we will place f3 f3 force and f dash force in order to have uh, the total resultant of these three forces so removing f1 and f2 we just have f dash the second angle is f3 which is here now determination of the resultant is quite easy that will be f are actually again we are going to use cosine law now the two forces are f3 and f dash so f3 square f dash square plus 2 f3 f dash cos of let's say beta angle so beta angle is actually the angle between these two forces i mean this angle i'm talking about so this angle is uh, quite easy to determine because f3 is directed along positive x-axis and f dash is uh, 1.47 degree with a negative x-axis so if you want this angle then we simply did subtract 1.47 from 180 so then fr will be equal to everything in this equation is now known f3 is 50 f dash is 30.85 so cos of angle which is 180 minus 1.47 and on doing calculations we are going to get the resultant as 19.17 newton we now have got successful in determining the resultant the last thing which is its direction the magnitude is determined but its direction is still left for that again we are going to use the sine law so again we are going to one force at its same position and we'll displace the other force so i'm going to displace uh, f dash force and uh, placing the tail of f dash force with the head of the f3 force by doing so we are going to have this figure actually so these things are we know that is uh, the magnitude of f dash which is 30.85 newton its direction which is 1.47 now the closing side will actually be its resultant i mean fr now so we are interested in determining this angle actually it's quite easy how it's easy we know this interior angle only so we are going to utilize this interior angle that is sine 1.07 degrees divide by the magnitude of the opposite side which is the resultant itself and we just have calculated that is 19.17 now this angle is a uh, angle of our interest so divide by the opposite side which is 30.85 and when we do the calculations we are going to get this unknown angle as 2.36 degrees so this is another answer so now we have the magnitude of the resultant force which is 19.17 the angle which is 2.36 makes with a positive y-axis in clockwise direction this resultant is actually the resultant of the three forces which was asked to us and that's what we have determined so far so i think that's all from this video we have determined the required parameters which was the magnitude and direction of the resultant force fr by first determining the f dash force which is uh, the resultant of f1 and f2 
then the resultant of f dash and f2 well, not f2 actually it is f3 yeah it's f3 actually a slight mistake here this is f3 so then this is how we can do it i think uh, it's quite easy to follow this uh, question but if you think that there is something which uh, you are unsure or something which is not understandable to you guys then just please let me know through the comment section so that i can get back to you that's all from this video thank you for watching this video i hope to see you in next coming videos till then bye